Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about my favorite movie from each letter of the alphabet. Now, I have wanted to do this video for a very long time and just have never gotten to it, so without further ado, let's just get into it. Ah uh, yes, about time. Now this is a film that I wouldn't say is deep or meaningful, or really is... You know, anything thought-provoking in any way whatsoever. It's just a movie that I find really comforting and I really have a fun time with. And yeah, that's really enough for me. It's really just a great, fun, entertaining, and also happy movie about this guy that just, you know, goes through life, gets married, and has a happy life. And that sounds insanely boring. And I... I would say the same thing if I were you too, but it's something that I just have so much fun watching and hold so dearly, and it just makes me happy. I can't really describe it or describe why it does, because I would just sound stupid if I did. I just, I just love this movie for no reason whatsoever, other than it's just great. Now, I know this is of the same genre of the film I just mentioned, but trust me, this isn't going to keep continuously happening throughout the video. Before Sunrise is a great movie with a fantastic cast as well as a script, and this is really what carries the movie, to be honest, and that's not a bad thing at all. In fact, it's, like, what makes the movie so good, and it's not that it's just carried by this and that there's really bad things in it or mediocre things in it, beyond these two parts no this is just what it's focusing on and it does a great job at doing that i absolutely love the script and i love the dialogue specifically i think that's what holds it not exactly the script as a whole but more specifically the dialogue between the two characters how they interact the conversation that they, ha they have it feels so natural it feels so fluent and just normal and i absolutely love that about it and once again, the chemistry, they both feel like real people just talking to one another. And that, I feel like, is what makes this film feel so raw, so genuine, and just something that I could easily come back to and have such a great time with. I'm just gonna be honest, Citizen Kane's probably the best movie ever made, and that's not really just, you know, any subjectivity, it's just facts, because... It truly is probably the greatest movie ever made. And there's so many reasons for that that I will tell to you right here, right now. So with that said, I think one of the things that is so great about Citizen Kane is the phenomenal cinematography, especially for the 1940s. Wow, this movie is gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful with every single shot, panel frame. It just looks beautiful to a T and I absolutely adore it for having such good, gorgeous cinematography that is so jaw-dropping. But I think the main thing here, the main thing that we should be talking about is Charles Foster Kane himself, his character, and who he becomes. Which is very interesting because he's this man that's really only has all this money, has all this fortune, but at the end of it, doesn't really complete him or make him really happy of course there's that whole generic thing that money can't make you happy but i feel like it's a little bit deeper and a lot more complex in this film than just simply well that and i think him just saying that he wants people to love and admire him but really he's only given money at the end of it He's really only given fortune and power, but I, but all he really wants is, you know, love and compassion, and sadly, he doesn't get that as much, and it's kind of a tragic story, it's kind of a sad story at the same time, but also, it has this brilliant storytelling to attach to it as well. Everything about it is phenomenal in every single way. Like I said, the storytelling, the cinematography, the performances I haven't mentioned, they are great. If you, if you want me to know anything about them, they're great. It's just an overall great movie that I'm kind of doing a horrible job at explaining why it is, but it just is. So take that as you will.
Okay, well, I think this one was kind of an obvious one, and let's be honest, there's no other competitions for D. Since those don't count, the Dark Knight is here, and you can deal with it with however way you want to, but this movie is absolutely phenomenal in every single way, and you can't tell me otherwise. First off, once again, starting with the cinematography, it is really great. It really portrays Gotham and is very interesting and, you know, just fascinating way with it kind of being designed as a modern city. I know that has nothing to do with the cinematography, but when you watch the movie and how the cinematography looks and how it plays out, you get what I mean on how it's able to portray all this, weirdly enough. But... Yeah, I think it. the cinematography is great. The action scenes are actually done really well in this movie, unlike in Batman Begins. They're shot really well. You know, there's some really nice just camera movement in general. There isn't that, that much to say about it. It's just really good. Christian Bale is phenomenal as Batman in my eyes, as Bruce Wayne and Batman. I don't know why I just said Batman, but he's so great at portraying this character. When you see him, you really are able to see the Batman. And while I don't think he's the best Bruce Wayne or Batman, I think he does a phenomenal job in his role and does a really good job at just, you know, adding to the movie, adding flavor to it in a way. Of course, the Joker is amazing. I don't really even need to talk about that. He's a phenomenal villain. He's the best comic book villain of all time. There's just no debate, really, besides, like, maybe Thanos. I mean, he's... He's just phenomenal, and I'd say every week way, but I think the one interesting part about this movie, which has to do with the Joker, is he kind of wins in a way. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, well, you know, the Joker just kind of disappears or whatever, but he proved his point. His whole idea was that the greatest man could fall, which is in Harvey Dent. And I feel like the way that's tied in is so brilliantly done, so phenomenally done, and it's overall just pretty much a perfect movie. There's very little wrong with it. I absolutely adore this movie, and everyone else does for good reason. If I'm being honest, Eraserhead is probably one of the most creative films of all time. Sorry, not sorry, at least from a visual perspective. Because there's so many interesting, fascinating shots that you can't help but just respect the creativity for. Especially, you know, there's that shot with like, I don't, I, I, I don't know how to describe it without me sounding like an idiot, but that shot where, you know, you see the main character's head and then there's like a moon behind it or something like that. Shots like that are just so beautiful. Not exactly beautiful, I don't think is the right word to describe it. More so, you know, weird, fascinating, and mysterious are probably the best words to describe this film, if anything. Definitely not beautiful. I really just... Love the interesting atmosphere. It's also weird, mysterious, a lot like the cinematography, and just makes you have this interestingly, not exactly comforting, but, you know, laid back type of atmosphere that is, you know, being conveyed throughout the film. Also, there's some interesting ideas here about parenting that are kind of, you know, hidden underneath a little bit. It's not exactly this massive hidden message, but it's something that kind of fascinatingly uh, is in this movie. But overall, great film, great movie, one of my favorites. And yeah, it's a classic. So I know everyone makes a terrible joke about not talking about Fight Club. For your sake and for my sake, I'm just not going to do that and just head right into everything. I really like the cinematography. I think it's all very over the top and at the same time, you know, gritty, you know, with the way the color grading is shown. I think it's really good. I think it's really well done. And I think it's, you know, something to behold. It's very Fincher and I like that. So... Yeah, I think that's how I feel about the cinematography. I think the commentary on masculinity is very interesting, and a discussion that I think should be had, I think it just kind of shows it, 
without trying to have anything deep about it. It's not trying to be deep when it comes to that. It's just saying, this is what masculinity is like. Take it as you will. And I think that works better for a movie like this, at least in my opinion. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt, I'd say they give very good performances. Nothing Oscar-worthy or anything like that, but this movie isn't really trying to be like an Oscar type of movie. So, yeah, I don't care. I really don't care. I really think that it's trying to be fun, but at the same time, still a well-made movie. And it just kind of blends those two together to make something, you know, really good overall and make one of my favorite movies that are just, you know, good at doing both. Good at both ends. Not trying to be insanely deep, but also not trying to be a completely stupid, dumb, fun movie. And I think it just works. I can go with that. Okay, now we have the five flies. I'm going to keep this brief, but this is probably... One of the greatest movies I've ever seen, and the second greatest animated movie I've ever seen. It's so emotional with its package and like the way it's portrayed. It is just nothing but a pure tragedy, and you feel so bad for these because you, of course, want them to, you know, be happy. You want them to, you know, get out of all of this, and the way it ends and how it, it's just so sad. It's so heartbreaking. It's so heart wrenching. It really shows the consequences of war and the sacrifices that happen because of starting war in such a awful way. And I don't think I can really explain it as great as the movie truly is. I feel like you have to just truly watch it to understand the type of movie this is and why it's such a masterpiece at what it's able to do. Okay, Halloween. The movie out of all of these that I've watched the most recent as of recording this, and yeah, it's a masterpiece. I'd say it's probably one of my favorite movies ever, and I'd say at least in the top 200, maybe 100 best movies ever made, because it is just that good. And really, it doesn't do a ton of crazy things, you know? It's not like there's all this flashy, amazing, gorgeous cinematography, you know, and phenomenally perfect acting that's just like wow look how look at how great it is it's more subtle with how great the movie is i feel like when it comes to the cinematography it's great it's really great at sometimes there's some phenomenal tracking shots but it's not trying too hard it's just being good it's just you know trying to give you good cinematography great cinematography that's able to complement everything around it the tension is absolutely perfect it just builds and builds and builds and you don't know when Michael Myers is going to come out and kill somebody. You don't know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen at all. Because it's so unpredictable. And because it feels like every scene, every little second of the movie, anything could happen. Anything could happen. It just builds the tension. The tension's always there. It never disappears. It's always like in the back of your mind. It's like, when my, when's Michael going to come? When is he When is he going to pop up? When is he going to kill somebody? It's It's anxiety inducing in the perfect way the performances are great donald glover of course is phenomenal as well as jamie lee curtis they're both great in their roles they're both phenomenal in the performances and do such perfect jobs at just pretending to be terrified and just adding flavor in a way to this movie and this movie isn't very like flavor filled but it helps to like make such a great movie and I am shocked that this movie had such a low budget, yet they did so much with it. Apparently, they put all the budget into the cinematography, and that just shows that there was just so much care into making just a great movie and nothing more. Just trying to make a great film that people can love and remember forever. Now, this is a movie I talked about a lot on my channel, but we're just gonna, you know, keep it brief and still talk about it even a little bit. It's Such a Beautiful Day is a great movie in almost every sense of the word, and it's one of those movies that's just so meaningful, so creative, and just something to really behold. It's one of the most creative movies I've ever seen and one of the most interesting movies I've ever seen. And there's a reason why so many people don't know how to rate or think about this movie because it's just such its own thing. It's hard, It's hardly like even a movie 
really when when you think about it because of how the way it's portrayed the way things play out and just how it is because it's so different from anything else you've seen it's clearly its own thing and the way it conveys its messaging and the way it conveys you know just everything about it the themes the character of bill it's just in its own world and i absolutely love it for that The thing is, this is a pretty generic pick, and everyone knows why Jurassic Park is great, so there's really not that much explaining to do, but why not? I'll, I'll explain a little bit. Of course, the score is phenomenal. It's such a great theme, and, you know, it really helps you invite you into this amazing, crazy world. I really love the world building and the way it's all portrayed, how we get introduced into this idea of dinosaurs, and I think it works quite well. With the way, you know, everyone's introduced, the characters I introduced, the reactions to the dinosaurs being alive is an interesting concept. And I think it works quite well. There's also some great tension-filled scenes throughout the movie that I think do a great job at just being tension-filled scenes that are, you know, quite great and quite enjoyable to watch at the same time. It's great. It's Jurassic Park. Everyone knows why it's phenomenal. Moving on. I haven't seen any murder mysteries, really, not that many, but I'd say Knives Out is probably the perfect one, if I'm being honest, because of how many, how intricate, you know, it is, because there's one twist, and there's another, and there's another, and it keeps building with so many different, you know, key plot points, so many different ideas, so many different things that are happening, and it just builds upon that, it keeps building upon that until we get to the final reveal, it all builds and stacks up on one another, and it's very interesting, it's very entertaining to watch as well, which is very important, I think, because it's also fun to watch, while being very complicated at certain points, and overall, it's just a great movie with some really well done cinematography, pretty nice score, and it's just overall a great movie that I have a fun time watching anytime I decide to put it on, which might not be very often, but when I do put it on, it's a great time. Lock Stock is a movie that's very much like a Tarantino film, but in a good way, if you know what I mean. I think when it comes to it, I do see some Tarantinoisms with a film like this, but I don't care. It's still great, and it has its own different Guy Ritchie style that I really do enjoy. I feel like what's so great about this movie is that every piece of dialogue, every plot point, everything that happens always ties together to the, until we get to the third act. It all ties together into the third act to give something very, you know, fun and entertaining when it comes to the end of it. All the little pop, plot points, all the little subplots, everything that happens in the movie it all ties into the end. And then eventually we get a bombastic fun third act that's great to watch and I absolutely love that about this movie there's not a ton to say about it. it's just stylistically pretty good and also i really love the way the script is crafted to have all these different subplots and pieces of dialogue enter into the movie and combine into the third act and just the way it plays out is great Okay, so My Neighbor Todd Thoreau. This is a movie I brought up, I'd say, at least a couple times in this channel, but I'll talk about it again. I really do like this movie, mainly because it's a comfort movie. It's a movie that's very relaxed and laid back, for the most part, with the way things are, you know, portrayed. And I really like that. It has this very, in a way, joyful energy and this magical energy that Hayao Miyazaki does a great job at portraying and showing to us, and I really like it for that. It's just a really, you know, fun, enjoyable movie that happens to have some great animation as well. And a really nice, interesting world. That's it. The Nightmare Before Christmas is the only Christmas and Halloween movie ever made, and I don't have a problem with that. I absolutely love this movie on so many accounts. The style of it is phenomenal. I absolutely love the, anim the stop motion animation. I think it's really well done. It has this Burton edge to it, even though this movie wasn't directed by Burton. I think it's really great stylistically. I really love the, just the designs, the atmosphere of it all, and just the way it looks as a whole is just 
so gothic and interesting, and it really brings you into this world. Speaking of the world, it's great. I really love these characters. I love these whole ideas, these concepts, the world building, the way they introduce this stuff is great. Overall, it's just a great movie, and everyone knows why it's a great movie. It teaches a pretty important lesson, and also at the same time, you know, has a lot of style. It's a very fun movie overall. It's just an overall great package. I'm going to be honest, there aren't many good movies that start with O, so really, the other guys was kind of just a why not pick for just whatever reason. It's a fun, entertaining movie that I do really enjoy, but let's be honest, it's nothing special or, like, amazing. It's just a fun movie that I'd rather watch over other movies that I'd say are solid. So, yeah. You know why I love this movie. Now, I... Now, I've not seen A Quiet Place in over, like, three years, but there's not that many good movies that start with Q, okay? Leave me alone. But from what I remember about this movie, I remember it being very great. I really remember loving the tension the build-up, you know, how, just the way the movie, like, overall felt with the way it uses sound, with the way that it's how everything feels, like, every little noise just kind of makes you, like, scared in a way, like, terrified, it's like, what are, you know, when are these monsters gonna come out, are they gonna, from this little noise, are they just gonna come running after these, this family and kill them, or something like that, I know I'm not explaining it very well, but honestly, it's hard to when you haven't seen a movie in over three years, and I don't know what else to put here, okay, so... Yeah, A Quiet Place goes here. Deal with it. Ah yes, Rushmore. The first Wes Anderson movie that really started to feel like Wes Anderson. I feel like there's just so many great things about this movie. From the main lead to as well as, you know, the side leads such as Bill Murray. All the performances are great and really do just everything that you could really get from a performance i really love the main lead he does such a great job at playing this flawed narcissistic character that really is just someone that you really do root for but at the same time is such a not very great person for most of it but also not exactly a horrible person he's just a very flawed human being this also can be shown with Bill Murray. I think he's also someone that is a very flawed person that has a lot of problems, but also isn't a terrible guy that you don't want to root for. A lot of it has to do with fighting your dreams and fighting for what you love and such, and that is shown very well throughout this movie. Overall, it's just a great Wes Anderson movie that is my favorite of his, and honestly, I can't think of any other movie that he has that comes close to this. Okay, yeah, Shawshank. I've talked about this movie so, 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 so many times that I don't even think I need to really talk about it that much. It's Shawshank, you know, great cinematography, great acting, great characters. Just great, it's a masterpiece. We all know it, okay? At this point, I've said it so many times. You've probably gotten sick of me saying it so many times. Yeah, it's a masterpiece, we all know it, okay? We all know it's a great movie. Moving on. Okay, so the thing, this is a movie, again, that I've talked about so many times, but here, I'll talk about it again. First of all, the characters I'd say are really well done. I liked, of course, you know, Kurt Russell and everyone else. I can't really remember anyone's name specifically, but I I remember the group of characters. I remember them being pretty solid, and I remember really liking Kurt Russell in this movie as well. You know, it's a solid connection that you form between them. And they all have solid chemistry with one another. Also, I really love the tension, the idea that you don't know who the thing could be. It could be anybody. And there's this anxiety looming around everyone of who could it be. We don't know who who the thing is. So that cause a lack, causes a lack of trust. And I think it works very well overall, at least in, well, you know, my, my opinion. Also, the practical effects are fantastic. They are some of the greatest practical effects in any horror movie. The way that just, like, just so many good, crazy, you know, animated, you know, 
creatures that are designed in this and also like just freaky like they all work very well it's just a great horror movie you know it's just a great 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 horror movie and one of john carpenter's best not his best obviously i'd say that's halloween but it's one of his best at least a second one Now, there aren't that many good movies that start with the letter U, but if there were, I'd say Unbreakable would probably still be one of the better ones, at least, at least in my opinion. I really like this movie, and it's definitely Shyamalan's best from what I've seen. I mean, I don't know how much that really says about him, uh, but I'd say it's his best. I haven't seen The Sixth Sense in a while, but I mean, from what I remember, it's still his best. But anyways, uh, getting off topic... This is a really great movie, I'd say. One of the main reasons being the contrast between Mr. Glass and Mr. Unbreakable. The whole dynamic between them and their, you know, the, their differences. You know, the way they are and how they become the people that they become is interesting and fascinating to me. And I really like that idea. Also, the whole spin on it being a comic book movie and so much is very interesting, fascinating, and something I'd say that works very well. The twist is great, I'd say, at the end. It was a very well-done twist, probably... You know, one of the better Shyamalan twists, at least maybe the second best one. Also, the visuals are pretty nice sometimes. There's some really good visuals in there. Overall, just a really, really great film that I really do like. And while I haven't watched it in a while, I, uh, I still remember really liking it. So, yeah. Vampire is a movie I do not talk about. I should probably do that. I think what makes this film so great why I love this movie so much and what holds it to as such a high standard, at least in my personal opinion, is the atmosphere. It is all about the atmosphere with this movie, and I absolutely love it for that. It's so creepy, mystic, weird, odd, and I absolutely adore it. It's probably one of my favorite horror movie atmospheres of all time just because of how unique and how distinctly, uh, I don't know the director's name, but how distinct it is, you know, how distinctly whatever the director's name is, it just feels like its own thing. At least in my opinion. Also, it being black and white was perfect. Even if, like, they could put it in color, it would not work. I think, like, if this was... If they chose to make this in black and white, I would completely understand why. Because it would not work in color at all. It just would feel weird and odd. And just wouldn't make sense. But because of, you know, the fact that it is in black and white, it makes it have its own, you know, idea. And it, it makes it feel like its own thing. And it perfectly portrays the atmosphere that it is trying to go for it's not exactly a masterpiece by any means or one of the best movies ever made it's just a movie i really can appreciate because of how well crafted the atmosphere is and how good it is at just being an interesting horror movie okay whiplash this is one of those movies once again like vampire where it's so great and i love it so much but for some reason, I hardly ever rewatch it, and I need to get on that a lot more because it is so great. And I forgot how great it was because I haven't seen this movie in over like a year and a half until a couple months ago. But anyways, talking about Whiplash, I absolutely love this movie for so many different reasons. The cinematography, first off, is fa fantastic. It is some of the greatest cinematography, I'd say, of the 2010s at least. I, I love it. It's gritty, but also looks so, you know, not clean, but like looks like there's so much effort put into it. It looks like it had a bigger budget than it actually did, even though it was a very small budget. It looks like it was like maybe 50 million, 60, maybe a hundred million dollars with how nice it looked. Also, I really love, you know, JK Simmons and our main lead, Andrew. I think that they both do a very good job in their performances. JK Simmons gives you a complete anxiety rush in this movie. He makes it so tension filled. It makes you at the edge of your seat all the time throughout the entire film and I absolutely love this performance. Andrew is someone who just does a really good job at portraying some at portraying someone that so desperately, you know, wants to be a great musician and will work and do anything that is necessary to get to his goal. And once you get to the end, it's so fantastic. There's so much payoff when it comes to it. And I absolutely adore that ending. The editing in that ending is perfect. Just the cinematography as a whole is perfect. Just all of it, all of it, the build up to it. It's probably one of the greatest third acts, I'd say, in cinema history. And that's not an exaggeration, in my opinion. It is one of the greatest I have ever seen. Also, it talks so much about the cost of success and the cost of, you know, having to sacrifice for greatness, having to sacrifice for what you want to truly do and accomplish. 
and yeah, it, it's a realistic movie. It's, it just checks, it's a movie that checks off pretty much every box you can imagine for a movie ever, and I, lo I love it for that. I don't know how anyone could, you know, not at least really like this movie. It's just, just been the best, been the best. This is another movie I've talked about to no end, and I don't feel like talking about it in insane amount right now, but you know what, I'll, I'll give it a brief review, why, why not? The animation is absolutely gorgeous, of course, I love the mixture of blue, yellow, and pink. I think it really, really works on a nice level, I absolutely love the way it's done, it just looks so pretty, and just adds to the atmosphere in a lot of ways. I really like the characters, I really like the romance, the concept is great. It's just a really great movie, I've talked about this movie before, I've made a video essay on it, go check that out if you want to, I guess. It's a great movie, I love it. Moving on. Now I know this is very much a reach, but there's not that many good movies that start with Z, okay? Leave me alone. Zack Snyder's Justice League is definitely not an amazing movie, or not even really on the same caliber as a lot of the movies I mentioned. However, it is the best movie to start with the Z that I have seen, so I'm just gonna go with that, alright? So, because of that, let's just talk about the movie, because it's a pretty great movie, I'm not even gonna lie. Now it is four hours, and it's not something I'm gonna watch a ton, but... For it being a Justice League movie, and from the garbage movie that we got before, I'd say this is very, very much a step up in a lot of ways. In, in pretty much every way, actually. Because every character becomes better, you know? Every character gets a little bit more of a moment to shine. Steppenwolf's actually pretty solid in this. I'd say that is that that is one of them that shocked me that actually made Steppenwolf not too bad of a villain in this movie. He's actually pretty good, surprisingly. Also... I really did think that Flash and Cyborg, they had really good arcs in this movie. They, you know, they they were more fleshed out. We got to know them as characters more. And I really, really do like that. The other characters weren't as fleshed out as much. But the thing is, we already knew stuff about them. So we didn't really need more of an arc from them, at least in my opinion. Also, I really, really liked the visuals. I thought they were great. I thought they did a very, you know, overall good job as a whole. And he can be very good at visuals. When he chooses to be, he doesn't use that god-awful color grading in, like, movies like Man of Steel and Army of the Dead. Like, I'm, I'm just glad he didn't use that here. Now, of course, the more I think about it, it's definitely not a masterpiece. It's definitely not a great movie that I thought it was. But I just really had a great time just seeing all these characters come together. And just seeing, and actually, you know, done very, very well that, honestly, even with this flaws, I still really do love it. Oh, 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 oh,